have been recycling since we transitioned to plastics in the early 60s, but we've been aggressively recycling horticultural containers uh, since early 2009. We, we wanted to base it in Michigan because that's where our manufacturing is located and, and it's it, with, within great proximity to our manufacturing plants because most of the raw materials that we are running through there come right back into our own products. One of the things that drove us into recycling these used containers was a black eye that plastics got within the horticultural industry. Another um, factor in that was that there was a lot of valuable material that wasn't being reclaimed or reused. For us to continue providing containers that are economically feasible for growers to use, we can't throw something that valuable away. We began recycling in the spring of 2008, so it's been 10 seasons now, and it really began with a conversation between Cal Diller and myself. We were charged um, by one of our customers that uh, we really needed to have a more eco-friendly solution to um, our plastic pots and trays, and we felt as a group that recycling that was the most um, efficient and doable solution that uh, was in front of us. Well, the process really began looking at our distribution from the standpoint we needed to have a flow of goods and we have a group of stores where we're the category manager and that allows us to have trucks in those stores throughout the year and so the consumer can bring in their plastic and put it on our shipping carts and we can bring that back. It ends up both here at Henry Mast Greenhouses and at Masterpiece Flower Company where we unload trailers and clean the plastic off from the racks. It doesn't have to be from our retail location, it can come from other retail locations and we'll send that to East Jordan Plastics where it's ground washed and reused as a plastic container again. Well there are a lot of benefits for us. So one of the main benefits obviously is being in the green industry we want to be responsible and uh, by recycling product we're not sending tons of stuff to the landfills so um, we're closing the loop. We feel like it's important that with us recycling it here and getting it to East Jordan, it's not going to a recycling center that might use it for other products. We know that it's getting made for horticulture products again, so to close that loop has been very important for us. There's a lot of product here that we take back that we actually can reuse as well. And overall, we just want to, we want to do the right thing for the earth being part of the green industry. Many of these containers are reusable by the grower. Those that aren't come to us for recycling. Through the cooperation of several large national retailers and regional retailers, they've willingly uh, encouraged the growers to take those back. It's a very important feed stream of material for our manufacturing operation, and uh, we would like to work direct with growers as much as possible. We don't want to get containers back that's, or a pot back, for example, that still has a full plan in it, but any residual soil, uh, paper labels, or tags, things of that nature are fine. We collect polystyrene, polypropylene, and high-density polyethylene, which are the primary materials used in plastic horticultural containers. And we can move loads within 24 to 48 hours of being notified of a full truckload of material. It's keeping 15 trailer loads of plastic out of landfills. I think consumers love it. I think it's going to be common at every chain store or big box store that they're going to recycle plastic. And we use a lot of plastic in our industry, there's no doubt. And I think to be proactive on it and start letting people know that we're using this again is nothing but gaining us business and market share. Our recycling program uh, starts with the grower and consumer. Um, we recycle the containers that are generated at the greenhouse level and also containers that are generated uh, from the retail level. And so at the greenhouse level, um, growers consolidate their used containers, any surplus containers, obsolete tags, and used plug and propagation trays. As those trays are going down the transplanting line, at the end of that line, simply nest and stack the empty plug trays together, palletize them in either 48 inch or 90 to 100 inch pallets, and simply wrap with uh, shrink wrap or banding to secure the pallet, 
and they're ready to go for recycling. At the retail level, um, at some of the larger big box retail outlets, consumers now can bring back their used growing containers. Um, the grower leaves an empty shipping rack at that retail location bannered with signs that instruct the consumer to bring back their containers after, after uh, planting their plants. Once those containers go back to the retail outlet, they're put on the shipping rack. When the shipping racks are full and the grower is in that retail outlet delivering new plants, they take the full shipping rack back to their greenhouse location where at that point the containers are either reused again by the grower or sorted and consolidated for us um, to recycle. So having a baler set up and a few different sort bins, one sort bin for each type of plastic as those carts come into the greenhouse. The grower can then uh, sort the plastic off the cart into one of the three bins. When one of the three bins are full, then they can wheel them over to the baler and make a bale. For growers to get the best price for the recycled plastic, it's important that the material is well consolidated and sorted by material type. When a grower has enough material, whether it be a full load or less than truck load that they need moved for recycling, we will use our own trucks or outside carriers to pick that material up, bring it back to our South Haven facility, um, and turn it into good clean regrind that is then used at our East Jordan or Beaverton facility and South Haven facility for manufacturing new containers. All of that material that we are turning into good clean regrind is being used by ourselves to manufacture new growing containers. When we have the high impact polystyrene at our East Jordan facility, that goes into our uh, raw material mix at 80%. And one of the uh, products that we're making here at our South Haven facility is a web flat that's made from 100% recycled horticultural containers. So there's nothing else in this in this part besides uh, what once were used growing containers. I mean, getting involved with our recycling program is as easy as picking up your phone and giving us a call. We want to work with any grower who wants to recycle. The, the more horticultural containers that we can collect for recycling, the fewer that will wind up in a landfill and the more of that plastic that we will keep in our industry. I mean, this is truly a closed loop recycling program. These are used horticultural containers that are getting put back into new horticultural containers. We would encourage those consumers that are buying plants to, to buy them from uh, a participating retailer, whether it be a garden center, whether it be uh, one of the larger national chains that, uh, that support the recycling effort. These used containers will end up being recycled and in your product for the following year, it will help sustain the industry. I think maybe it will help lead other types of containers, whether they be food related or packaging related, to follow suit. We're the original green industry. Let's continue to be green by recycling plastic. We believe that this recycling program is very important to the future of our industry. It's making plastic growing containers the most sustainable growing container, and it's keeping those valuable resources, being the plastic, within our industry so that we can use those for raw materials over and over again.